Today, let's talk about time travel. You know, we are time travelers. And let's talk a little bit about dimensions. I know it might be a little woo-woo for some of you, but there's some real stuff here. So time travel. So we're talking about the fourth dimension. Do we experience the fourth dimension as human beings? What I'm experiencing, what's coming up for me, the answer is absolutely yes. So here's an example. If we're wounded, and I call it a soul wound, when we have a traumatic experience, usually early in our childhood, we have this fight or flight response. And in reaction to that, our ego steps in to protect us. Our ego, this amazing, single-minded, dedicated soldier to our protection comes in and creates a belief in our unconscious mind that is disempowering. Not because it wants to create a disempowering belief, but because it intentionally understands that if we have that belief, we are going to put up walls, emotional walls in our life that while they may involve a lot of suffering, will absolutely ensure that we won't have that level of pain again. We won't get to that point of fight or flight fear again. I mean, that's the objective that the ego has, I believe. And I guess it works, except if we have these disempowering beliefs in our unconscious mind that erupt into our conscious mind, that the conscious mind always looks at it as a truth, then we do live our lives in suffering. We just don't get to the death part of suffering, you know, where it's like the, that edge of fight or flight, but we're close to it. So when we talk about those wounds, when we heal one of those soul, what I call a soul wound, let's say that we experienced the traumatic experience that the, where that wound happened 20 years ago, then with the healing of that wound, that, that further integration of our soul, we get closer to the wholeness that is the truth. That 20 years ago trauma wound healed 20 years later puts us on a whole new timeline. So all of the events from that wound, as if it never happened, are going to create a whole new timeline. And, and for me, I'm thinking that that's the source, at least one of the big ones, of an instant manifestation experience, like a serendipitous experience. Also, another example is when we imagine the past and we explore history. We have lots of resources to go to to understand historic things, experiences people have, books that have written, and stories that are told. Every time we do that, we link up with someone's aha moment that they share and then we accept or we get, you know, it lands. So we get an aha out of it. Every time that happens, we completely absorb that experience. So when we look into historic events and discoveries, we bring our powerful now in that moment where we discover something that was discovered historically and shared, we are now just receiving it. We bring our powerful now into the past and shift the timeline. So I think we are definitely fourth dimensional, we're three dimensional, fourth dimensional beings. So now it would be interesting, the next subject would be, what about the fifth dimension? For me, my investigation has brought me to an understanding, a hypothesis, <laughs> that the fifth dimension is union. It's oneness. There is no other. There are further dimensions, <laughs> I guess, that people talk about, but that's as far as I got. So in that world, if, if we think about the human experience, I believe that we walk between those worlds of the three-dimension material that we can all kind of point to and say that is physically, and the other world, which is non-physical, which is also part of our experience that we participate in if we will wake up to the awareness that we do. And we can get intentional about practicing in that non-physical space. That's walking between the worlds. I was first introduced to that concept by Greg Braden. I think it was his second book, Walking Between the Worlds. Beautiful, and it's an ancient concept. It goes back thousands of years into the great ancient wisdom of our ancestors. So we're time travelers. We're spiritual and physical beings at the same time. Waking up, is about embracing that and leaning into the great mystery that that offers. This great mystery that because of this infinite connection that we embrace, we know we never, ever, ever will get it all. But we can lean into that great mystery and each discovery we make into the great mystery, into that exploration, is just wonderful. And there's unlimited numbers of them available. And we do it together. I'm going to leave it there for now.
Until next time, take care.